This is the SF Productions Podcast Network. Good evening and welcome to another exciting episode of Vast Wasteland. Could it be Bob Denver, Karen Valentine, Walt, the cast of Soap, Henry Winkler, Mr. Ed and Wilbur, Marty J. Wiley, Mark Schmidbauer, and in the center square, Wilbur Neal. All on the new... Six Wednesdays at ten, Thursdays at three. At Darren Pamela Ferdin. Um, oh no, not another Burgess Meredith show. Um, Vast Wasteland, the video journal of popular culture. I'm your host, Mark Schmidbauer. I'm Wilbert Neal. And tonight, we're starting what will be, well, the, the new um, the new concept. concept exactly. It's kind of a rotating concept. We're going to not be just doing TV. We're also going to be doing comic books, which we're doing tonight. And we're going to be going into potpourri. Kind of a catch-all for everything catch else, basically. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but tonight, as you said, it is comics. And it's not just comics. It's the history of... DC Comics! DC Comics! <laughs> That's right. But before we get into the big extravaganza of fun, we want to tell you that we're on Tuesdays at 6, Wednesdays at 10, and Thursdays at 3 p.m. here on ACTV Cable, Cable 21. 21. And if you want to write into Bass Wasteland and say, hey, what's the deal? Why are you switching stuff around? Write into box 151411, Columbus, Ohio, 43215. Vote early and often. That's right. <laughs> Well, DC Comics, uh, the pioneer, uh, as far as, uh, there, were, uh, there were other companies before that. I hate to say that they were the pioneer, but they were the first company that is still around today. <laughs> okay, first one that's really um, left of right, the... Right, of, of the, uh, there, really, if you look at the history of comic books, you can go all the way back, technically, to the 1890s, to some stuff that was done in England. Yeah. But almost all of it, until 1935, when DC Comics got involved, was uh, reprints of uh, what you put in the Sunday Funnies. Yeah. Uh, there were no really original characters or original situations. It was all pretty much reprints, and it wasn't particularly well done. And it <laughs> Not that DC did it particularly well at the beginning, but... <laughs> it weren't really what you would call um, specific... Um, well, there definitely weren't any superheroes. No question, yeah. At that time, right? right. It was either funny things or, or maybe war comics. Or detective like, type of stuff. Cowboys, yeah. right. things like you know. that. But, um, <laughs> but all pretty much reprints. Exactly. And then this major Malcolm Wheeler Nicholson came into the came into the whole thing. This guy was a cavalry man in, um, in World War I. He was an adventurer. He did lots of, lots of stuff. Uh, he was in the Philippines and all this. And, and when he got back from the war, he 
found out he was a pretty darn good uh, writer for the Pulps. Now the Pulps are the old, uh, the old magazines they put out. Actually, they, in a way, they still put them out today. I think the the uh, the descendants of that are really the romance novels that come out today because yeah. <laughs> they're turned out pretty fast. Uh, and, the, and pulp refers to the really cheap quality of the paper they were using then because there's chunks of wood pulp in it. Right. <laughs> so <laughs> really cheap paper, so it was really cheap to produce. And they found out, well, he was really good at writing adventure stuff. So all through the 20s, you find this guy doing, uh, doing writing for the pulps. And around uh, 34, 35, he's, he's looking at these other comic books out there, and, and there's, there's a few others, uh, like uh, Funnies on Parade or stuff like that. I mean, it's, and it's all pretty much, again, Sunday Funnies uh, reprinted. And he says, you know, we could do original comics, uh, actual new original characters, still the same concept of funny, you know, you know, funny animal comics, and, you know, and still the same stuff they were doing, but new characters. So he started New Fun which was the first DC comic, actually at the time it was called National Allied Publishing or something like that, <laughs> Allied National. It's gone through a bunch of names. But uh, here, if we can take a look at this. <laughs> this is the first issue of New Fun. <laughs> we can take a look at that, there it is right there. These are like the first issue, this is 1935. Uh, these, I don't know how much these are worth. These are uh, worth certainly a fortune today. Billions and billions yeah. <laughs> of dollars. Basically. But, but that, was, that was new fun. So, um, so they were doing that. Um, uh, in 35, they put out a thing called More Fun. I mean, <laughs> they were highly original with these titles. <laughs> so, and they were probably the reason that a lot of... Um, a lot of our, well, let's say peop our parents or people that are possibly like within the next, the next generation, next decade, still refer to um, comics as, as funny books. As the funny books. Right. They're just like funny paper, <laughs> right. funny books. Right. And you'll still catch them. That they're, these are, they're saying, this, this is a funny book. This is a funny book. <laughs> so, <laughs> that, so they were putting this stuff out. It wasn't running very well until a man named Harry Donaldson. Um, came in, he had money, he was a banker, and he came in, and, and uh, Nicholson really didn't have a really good grasp of business. <laughs> so <laughs> this thing was going down fast. He, he was borrowing money to pay people every week, and, and he's paying people virtually no money to do this. I mean, uh, uh, for example, uh, Siegel and Schuster, uh, Superman, the, the originators of Superman, actually were getting paid something in the area of like $140 per story. Mm. <laughs> I mean, that's new. All the artwork and all the writing, and it was like five bucks, it came out to like five, ten bucks a page, and that's between the two of them. <laughs> so nobody was getting paid a lot in those days for, for doing the comics. So this Donaldson guy came in, and uh, he, he infused capital into it, and he also said, well, let's, let's start to organize this thing instead of just putting, you know, we'll, we'll kind of categorize it. And so they started a, a comic book, which is still running today, Detective Comics. Yes. Started in 1937. Um, so he was running that, and also at the same time, there was another man, M.C. Gaines. Ah. Ah, okay. Now, a lot of people consider him really the originator of D.C., uh, although, ironically, for many years, he was not directly involved with DC because there were two companies. There was um, All American Comics, and there was uh, DC Comics. There was AA and DC. Uh, they were two separate companies, but they kind of had a, a brother-sister type agreement where they would advertise in each other's comics, and each other's comics could borrow characters. And, and a lot of people assumed it was all one company, but it wasn't. So we come up to, let's see, we're up to about 1938, and then the big event occurs. <laughs> Action Comics number one. Yes. <laughs> the uh, this is obviously a reprint because I would need a couple arm garbs to come in with uh, with the actual version of it. Um, 1938. Uh, these were these two kids from uh, Cleveland, Cleveland, actually. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Siegel and Schuster, who since the early 30s, actually they started, uh, I believe, the the first uh, what's considered the first science fiction fanzine called science fiction <laughs> surprisingly <laughs> when enough. you're first in, in the field you can call it something really boring like science fiction so <laughs> or something and, really mysterious right like science, science fiction, fiction. <laughs> so, uh, so uh, in one of these six issues they put out while they were in high school they put out a story called the reign of the superman 
in which the Superman character looked a lot more like Lex Luthor, and he was a bad guy. <laughs> <laughs> and, but they said, well, this Superman concept, let's see if we can do something with it. And in the early 30s, they, just, they basically developed the same character that took over five years to actually reach the, the newsstands. And... Uh, they went, took them to all the publishers. All the publishers said, "This will no, never work." Never. <laughs> <laughs> Amazingly, I, you know, I suppose uh, hindsight's twenty twenty. But boy, <laughs> they were like, "Jump and leap an eighth of a mile? What are you nuts? He's lifting the car? Come <laughs> never, on, ever. Come on, uh -huh. this will never work." So, <laughs> so they finally came to to uh, to MC Gaines and Donaldson, and MC Gaines said, "Well, you guys over at DC should probably do this." <laughs> so, so they said, what the heck, they got this new comic book com called out, called uh, Action, Action Comics. Comics. So they decided, why not? Why not? So, <laughs> so they put this thing in, and uh, they were so worried that this Superman character wouldn't catch on, was the, the, fir the first issue, he's on the cover. For the next several issues, he's not on the cover. Yeah. <laughs> because they put, like, Zatera, the magician, and, and uh, Federal Man, you know, they, uh, some other stuff Siegel and Schuster was doing in, in some cases. And, um, and, they, uh, and they put them on the covers, and then they did this little poll to find out how this whole thing was, you know, what people liked. And what the kids liked, they found out that the kids were looking for the comic book with Superman in it. Yeah. <laughs> so they immediately slapped him back on the cover, and he's been there ever since. Exactly. <laughs> and, of course, Action Comics is still being, uh, being put out today. Still today. <laughs> so, so that was 1938, and that was the beginning, the, the, the beginning of the Golden Age, uh, according to most people right there. The Golden Age of comics basically lasting into the early 50s when the whole thing kind of dropped off. For reasons that we'll explain in a minute. Yes. <laughs> so, and then we had the next major character. Next major 1939. character. 1939. 1939. Um, Bob Kane developed a, um, a character to, um, well, it's kind of the, the dark side, I guess, of characters. He was, right. he was dark even then, but since then he's kind of lightened up a bit, but he's gone back to the dark thing now. Basically, we're talking about the guy with the ears and the cape. We're talking Batman. That's right. <laughs> And he was basically, he was first created to instill fear into the hearts of criminals, since criminals are a cowardly lot right. and all that, and they, um, <laughs> they're, they're superstitious and they're just afraid of things, and so he decided to come up with a symbol. Oh, and, he, he and worked hard on coming up with a symbol. But, but it, as in, as, as if an omen, as according to the comic book, a huge bat flies into... Flew in through the window. And, while he's studying, and he was... That's it! <laughs> I'll create a costume, and it'll be a bat, and I'll instill fear and terror into the hearts of all these right. bastard detours <laughs> and all. And there you go, Batman. And Batman. <laughs> I mean, basically, um, this story has been retold time and time again. His his parents were um, bringing him home from seeing Zorro, and they, <laughs> they go down Crime Alley, and then Joe Chill jumps out. And right. Basically, give me your loot and shoot them both, and leaves poor little Bruce there to see the whole watching, thing. Watching, watching his parents die in front of him, and and the, he basically becomes obsessed at that point. Especially today in the comics, in, yes. in the Batman comics, it's very obvious that he's really obsessed. I mean, they've they've really kind of said, well, he's almost not sane. Exactly. <laughs> he's almost like one little bit, and he'd be nuts. Yep. <laughs> he's really obsessed. The only thing that keeps him from becoming nuts is money. Right. <laughs> money and something to go. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> I mean, because cause Alfred is his butler. I'm sure he this guy is nuts. He keeps he goes out and he does this again and again and That's again. Right. Yeah, I mean, come on, how many times can he be patched up? <laughs> <laughs> so, so we have Batman, and uh, very quickly uh, over. I, I I I'm sure that Robin wasn't the first sidekick. I think Marvel was doing sidekicks just before. I'm not sure about that. But I'm sure there were other sidekicks. There were obviously well, other sidekicks. But there they, were, but they, let me see, Marvel wasn't actually Marvel at that time. Right, either. they were timely. But, yeah, but, but they still, were. there were, but certainly Robin is the best known sidekick. Right. And they brought it in for the obvious reason that mostly kids at the time were reading it and they wanted somebody, somebody to, to read. Kid, kids, 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 yeah. And there you go. So you had Robin, the, 
the boy wonder, wonder. who was also in a, kind of a similar thing where his <laughs> laughed at danger or something his, like that. His, his family was um, well, his mother and father were were killed. He was a circus performer, and they right. um, they angered some gangster people and. They cut their trapeze line, and he saw them killed just before him. And right. so um, Bruce happened to be up in the stands, and he <laughs> turns into Batman. He puts on a Batman thing, swings down to try to catch the criminals, and kind of scoops Robert up and says, well, hey there, young fella, you know. Um, <laughs> I'll help you. <laughs> yeah, and is there any, like, adoption thing that occurs there? Well, actually, there was later. They've, they've gone but, into But at that. the beginning, they never really got into those details. No, they didn't. It was just like suddenly... Robin the Boy Wonder. Yeah, boom. <laughs> well, I'll just, you'll be my ward and take you to the mansion. <laughs> yeah. I guess they figured he's a rich guy. The law didn't really question him on the whole thing. Exactly. Bruce Wayne's a rich guy. He can obviously take care of this kid. So, <laughs> Lots of money, no problem. Right. <laughs> and uh, right around 39, four, in, in 1940, that was when the real flood started, uh, especially, certainly in D.C. and everywhere else. Um, yeah. You had uh, the original Green Lantern, uh, Green Lantern, who uh, for some reason they decided, uh, well, he's, and well, for those who don't know the Green Lantern thing, let's just explain that. Um, this guy is, I believe he was like doing an archaeology or is in a cave or something. It seems like several of some, these started off as archaeologists yeah. or something. And <laughs> so he's in a cave and he finds this, uh, this lantern, this that, glowing, this glowing lantern. lantern, and he fashions this ring and all this, and, and he finds out that uh, he, he can shoot beams of green light that can form into any substance, any, you know, any, um, any form, and, and through his willpower, but his, uh, his big weakness was wood. Yeah. <laughs> wood. <laughs> kind of a strange weakness, but there you go, wood. wood. You, could, you could hit him over the head with a club, and you could you pretty well beat him up pretty easy. Yeah, if, you can, if you can get that close to him. Yeah, get that close to him to hit him on the head with hit a club. Hit him with something made He's of wood. Done. So, <laughs> Like get a croquet mallet, right. you know, and hit the ball. If you can angle it up just high enough, you could knock him He's right done. out. <laughs> so you had Green Lantern. You had the, the original Hawkman who... Was another archaeologist. Yeah. Uh, they, um, <laughs> That's amazing. Archaeologists and playboys were pretty much your... <laughs> and reporters. <laughs> yeah. that, that pretty much all your superheroes were doing that when they were in, in their secret identities. <laughs> Although um, they were reporters so that they could find out where the problems were right. so that they could become the superhero. and The archaeologist is always falling into mysterious things. Well, they, they, can, they always find these ancient, ancient things right. with, imbued with powers right. and and all this and it's like well Hawkman he's basically an archaeologist and he um, would collect these ancient weapons to use right. along with his ability to fly um, <laughs> and I'm not sure how the first Hawkman flew the first one he had well, wings but it, I don't know I, what I think powered it was, him yeah it was still the the, the, kind the of little thing he had in his chest I think okay. it was some sort of anti-gravity metal or something okay. I think they, they were still doing that Up for the first yeah. or something. <laughs> <laughs> Shades of Bullwinkle. He's got this upsidasium belt. In fact, I think it was the belt that did it. Yeah. And so that he had the wings there so that other people would say, well, he's well, he a must hawk be man. Yeah, he's, he's flying, flying with his wings, yeah. And so then you've got your hawk girl. Sorry, but it was hawk girl, girl at the time. Man. You know, it's, it became hawk woman later, you know, but right. it was hawk girl. Right. Because that's just the, the time it was. Right. And, um... <laughs> He would go around and he'd use these ancient weapons that he had collected, like, oh, he'd get a tomahawk or a bow and arrow or something, because he was he was trying to be true to the thing. He didn't want to have ray guns, or he didn't want to shoot bullets or something. Right. He just used ancient weapons to go after these nasty criminals. Now, you find everything. that for the most part of the DC heroes, that there's not a lot of gunplay of the superheroes. They're being shot at a lot, yeah. but, they're, but rarely are they pulling out a gun. Hardly any. In fact, at one point... Uh, actually, Batman had a gun at the beginning, and he wasn't, uh, he didn't have a problem with using it. <laughs> and after a while, they went, eh, maybe we shouldn't have him using uh, a gun. That's just too so, dark. He's too much like a criminal. Pretty much. Let's so we get better rid get rid of the gun. Of the gun. <laughs> so, and we'll give him a sidekick. Right. <laughs> Lose the gun, get a sidekick. So, oh, let's see. Um, oh, you've got, um, on the other end of the spectrum, you've got Wonder Woman. Right. And she was um, kind of a... I, um, Amazonian princess. <laughs> who kind of came up because of, well, World War II, I guess. Right. She was Basically, uh, if I remember the original version, this this uh, uh, flyer... Steve Trevor. Steve Trevor, of course. <laughs> uh, 
crash lands on Paradise Island, where with this hidden island where all the Amazons hang out, Basically. and and she has to take him back to man's world. And <laughs> actually, it's kind of interesting if you if you look at the especially the early Wonder Woman stuff. Um, Charles Moulton, I believe his name was, uh, who the creator of it was really into the superiority of women. Okay, and uh, really into the superiority of women in in uh, like whips and chains kind of way. <laughs> so, so there's and, and so there's a lot of stuff in the early in the early things of her in bondage. <laughs> that seemed to be a big theme at the beginning. Well, that whole that whole gold rope idea. Right. Yeah. Tying up guys. I tie you up with my gold rope. <laughs> yeah. You will do what I say. Right. You will do what Simon <laughs> says. <laughs> oh, it's Wonder Woman. <laughs> so, so you had her. Let's see. Uh, as far as other female and, heroes, and, well, there's the, never been a real, a real huge group. I think there's certainly more female heroes than there ever was, currently. Yeah. But then there was hardly any. And DC, the only other one that I can think of offhand is Black Canary. Yeah. And she was just basically another Batman type of somebody without any powers who just kind of uh, brought themselves up to a really great physical level and 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 basically did fist fights with guys and, yeah. uh, and kicks and stuff. <laughs> you know, martial art type of stuff. <laughs> she has the, uh, the, the, what was it, kind of a, a leather kind of thing and fishnet stockings. Right, yeah. And these little <laughs> high-heeled certainly, shoes. Certainly in the beginning, the, and, and really today, if you look at it, the, the, uh, the artists are certainly not averse to putting the women in skimpy outfits. Because <laughs> that's just the time it was. Right. So... <laughs> Well, let's see. So, who else did we have here? Um, well, let's see. You had, um, well, Starman. Starman. He's just another of the wealthy, bored playboy during the day. But he was also a great scientist. So, he figured out how to make this uh, cosmic rod. Yes. <laughs> and it would just harness uh, cosmic rays. rays. <laughs> and he could fly, and he could shoot beams and stuff. But basically, just another, you know, bored playboy type. Uh, let's see, he had uh, Dr. Midnight. Actually, Dr. Midnight's an interesting concept. Yeah. This guy uh, was actually, if I remember correctly, actually a doctor. And he uh, was, uh, some sort of experiment was going, I don't remember the specifics, but uh, he got knocked out and we woke up, he was blind. Hmm. But he found out he wasn't really, he was only blind from, uh, he was just incredibly sensitive to light. His eyes were very sensitive to light. At, at, at nighttime, he could see just as well as, as most people could during the day. Yes. So he wore these special goggles that made it always seem dark to him. <laughs> and he had these blackout bombs because he'd throw them out and dark smoke would come out. And nobody else could see, but he could. And he'd take out people. Yeah. <laughs> so so he's, he's like cheating. <laughs> yeah. Kind of. Kind of. And then you've got your... Um well, along with uh, well, the original Green Lantern, you got the original Flash. Oh yeah, Jay Garrick, <laughs> who uh, another the, a, a university uh, student who was working in these experiments using hard water, mm. and this beaker of hard water fell on the floor, and the fumes overcame him, and he uh, passed out, and he inhaled a great deal of these fumes, and when he woke up, he had super speed. <laughs> Go figure. Go figure. <laughs> you would think you would think that other people would figure this out, and everybody would have super speed. But that's right. People would be guzzling that hard water yeah. like nobody's business or something. So sniffing them fumes. So he's so he's whipping around, <laughs> basically. And let's see. Um, well, we got a, well, let's see. Um, I think the the Martian Manhunter might have started. Well, no, that's not, in the fifties. He's, he's, okay, he's, he's a little the 50s. later because he's I'll, not in the golden Excuse age. me, yeah. Martian. Okay, yeah. that's, that is a little later. You're yeah, right. Yeah, that's right. Um, you've got the Atom, right? Who was like a little wrestler guy. Yeah, <laughs> that was it. And at one point, he gained this great deal of strength from some magical source, apparently. But for for a great deal of his life, he was just this guy who had wrestled, and he was short. Yeah. <laughs> And that's it. <laughs> well, mighty you, would Adam. Hard, you would hardly think this guy could say, I'm a superhero. Come on. <laughs> well, then you've got um, who, the black cat. He was uh, another guy that he wore like a black a black cat costume, and yeah. he would go out and get in the No, 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 and... that's, um, you're thinking of um, Wildcat. Oh, excuse me, Not Wildcat. Black cat. Is there anything of Black Cat? Wildcat. Wildcat. And he was a boxer. Okay. And uh, this thing, uh, some sort of, 
uh, scandal ruined his career, and so he decided to get back at the guys by dressing up in a costume and, and beating them up while he was in <laughs> costume. And so they said, okay, you're a superhero too. So they had all these various superheroes in the Golden Age, and they all got together in, in the first real supergroup, <laughs> the Justice Society of America. Yes. <laughs> and this was created by the, the great Gardner Fox, who later, of course, uh, was doing Justice League of America, <laughs> the, the later incarnation of the whole concept. Evil and, doers beware. That's right. <laughs> and basically the concept of every, every all-star comic, which is where the Justice Society hung out, was uh, they'd find out something was wrong, they'd break up into teams, they'd usually get beaten by the, uh, the bad guys in, individually or in small teams. They'd all get put together, they'd all break free, and they'd all beat up the bad guys. Yes. <laughs> that was pretty much your concept. <laughs> it was teamwork or nothing. That's right. Oh, forgot Our Man. Oh, yes. Our Man. Here's a silly concept, I think. Uh, yet another scientist who... <laughs> figures out the Miraclo pill. <laughs> and this pill gives him incredible powers for one hour. And once, the, and once the powers are done, he can't take another one for like 24 hours, I don't think. That's so right. you gotta, it just drains him you gotta, so much. <laughs> you gotta budget your time as a superhero then. You know, it's like, well, I could get down there, but I may not be able to get back. <laughs> you know. What so. to do, what to do. <laughs> gotta be checking your watch a lot to be a superhero like that, I would think. Of course, if you're our man, you've got watches everywhere. Yeah. Probably. Whoop, wait a minute, gotta go. <laughs> <You know. laughs> See ya tomorrow. <laughs> I'll beat you guys up later. <laughs> oh. Right now, I must leave. <laughs> right. So, the golden age of comics uh, went in through the 1940s, and, um, and guess what? It looks like uh, we're actually uh, nearing the end uh, of, the, of the show today, at least of our talk, but we have a special segment that... Uh, We'd like to move into a new segment since, since at least one of us isn't going to be on most of the shows. We've decided to have a, a new segment where you can see everybody because, you know, somebody may miss one of, the, uh, one, of, one of the cast members here. The three or four people actually watch the show. And so it's a new segment. Let's take a look up in the attic. Let's take a look. <laughs> and here we go. Come on at you. <laughs> right now. Hello, welcome to the attic. Today we're going to discuss the wonderful invention of the 8-track tape. And here I have a lovely 8-track tape player to show you what a wonderful thing these were. You like kind of shoved it in here. And you've got music! Most of the time. I say you want to hear another song. It's like somewhere else on the tape. You change channels. Unfortunately, you're going to come in in the middle of the song somewhere. Unless, of course, you can wait out the really boring tracks to get to the good stuff. People had these things in their cars. This was like state of the art in like the 70s or something. Another popular thing to do is to get one of these things to hook up four speakers and have quad. Eight tracks were pretty cool, but after, if you played them like constantly and constantly, they'd stretch and then you get these real weird sounds coming out of it that wasn't the music you paid for. I don't think you can get these anywhere else anymore. I know I haven't seen them for probably eight or nine years. Flea markets? Maybe at a flea market. I don't know if they'd be in as excellent shape as these. <laughs> anyway, that's the eight-track tape. And I think we're all kind of glad that it's gone now. Bye-bye. <laughs> oh, oh, thanks a lot, Marty. <laughs> well, yeah, what were you going to say? No, I was, I was just looking at that. That's interesting. Um, now, eight track could you record, actually record on 8 track? There were some 8-track recorders, actually. Okay. I think I had one at one point. Because I I'm, I'm <laughs> was wondering if that was like another one that's kind of, you, you just can't do anything with it. Kind of like CDs. I mean, they're wonderful to hear, but you can't record them. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. Well, there well, we anyways. are. <laughs> Next time on Vast Wasteland, 
Wilbur and Marty, they're going to be by themselves just talking about toys, the first of our potpourri episodes. And we're going to get back to more of the DC history next time the uh, the comic cycle rolls around, which is three episodes from now. So you just have to memorize also, there's, another, there's another TV show. So That's if right. So If you're not totally confused yet. <laughs> you will be. <laughs> <laughs> so, until next time, we'll see you later. Good night, everybody. Bye-bye. Good evening, and welcome to another exciting episode of Vast Wasteland.